Well, hello everybody. This is your favorite Tankaichi once again. And, um, I have two games that are worth reviewing. And I plan to do them in a special form. Now, usually, I usually... I said that twice. Usually what I do is I usually show the game off while I'm actually reviewing the game. But this time, I'm going to show them off because I played these games quite recently. And before I start, this game, I have to say, was probably one of the most intriguing games that I ever saw because of Mr. Magma WK. And because of him, I bought not just one, but two games. I bought the I bought both games. I actually ordered both games. And what I did was um say, hey, might as well try it, see what it's like. And the game and the game series I am talking about is N three. And if you don't know what N three is, it stands for ninety nine nights. So what I have in my hands is the first one, which is ninety nine nights. And in in my left what I have in my left hand is the sequel, N three two. Also known as Ninety Nine Nights Two. And I have played the hell out of it, both games long enough for me to actually give a pretty good review of it. Well, of course, from what I've played, this game, the first game, actually reminds me a lot of Devil Kings for the PlayStation 2. You know what better a single boss row. Now, there's some good that comes from this game, because, really, if it plays like Sengoku Basra, you know what you can expect. Overkill characters. Just basically off-the-wall overkill characters. So far, I've only unlocked two characters. Out of the possible, I believe, five, six characters, I think six characters. And from what I know, from what I know, the game has its own set difficulty. There's some good and there's some bad about it. I'm going to go with the bad traits of it first. Then go to good. Well, the bad traits go like this. If it's in a set difficulty, this provides a bit of problems for some players. Especially when you're on the field of battle. For the most part, you're fighting orcs, goblins, and trolls. Yeah, I'm going to say orcs, because there are probably some orcs within the ranks of goblins. So yes, you're fighting goblins and other sorts of... Uh, other sorts of demi goblins of the like. Now, what's so bad about it is, well, how the hit, how the hit ratio is. You take one shot, bam! It takes about this much of your life. Now, when you get, now when you get hit by a troll, it takes that much. And the thing is, your life bar is like this. It's, you know, half a spiral, you know, just, you know, half a circle, I should say. And you have one bar on top of another bar, which is like this. Now, the first thing I thought about a life bar like this was Kingdom Hearts. Kingdom Hearts have a life bar just like that. But the thing is, the bar just goes this way. It doesn't go this, this way. It just goes this way. The more you level up, the more you get. 
it's a good thing and it's a bad thing. Like I said, the 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 way it's the way it is is because the hit detection is like ooh. <laughs> it's like it's kinda good, it's kinda terrible. It's good bec well I'll say this. It's more a fifty fifty. I'm just going to say that. It's 50-50. It's either good or either bad. But in any case, it can cause a lot of problems because, just think about it, you're trying to navigate the, navigate on the field. You're trying to get to point A to point B, like the Dynasty Warriors games, or the Samurai Warriors games. Rather, the Warrior series in general you're trying to navigate just like in the Warriors games, but there's a big difference. Your character. Your character is just about this big compared to everybody else. What I mean by everybody else is that, you know, you can only do so much with everybody else. But the problem is, well... <sighs> That makes you more of a target. That makes you liable to be hit or knocked out. So you just have to be cautious. Even when you defend it, it, it kind of it kind of won't do you any good. I mean, you're still going to take some kind of damage, regardless of if you defend or not. But you know, I am willing to give like another day or so and then just say eh, if I like it I'll share it if not I'll just keep it but the good thing is yes it reminds you of Sengoku Basara that means a whole lot of slapping the enemy around like the bitches that they are and the beautiful thing about it is you have not one but two bars to use like there's a red bar and then there's a blue bar. The red bar acts like a like the Musou Gage in um, the Warrior series. But what one thing it doesn't have is an overdrive bar. That's what I'm gonna call it. The blue bar is an overdrive bar, and it's right under the it's right under the red bar. Now the thing is, and I've seen it, and I have done it a couple of times. That depending on your character, you can wipe out a whole slew of enemies. Like, you can wipe out a freaking mob of enemies. Just like that with the overkill bar. It's the same thing with, it, with, the, same thing with the red bar, but you only knock out at least 25% of, of the groups. Because they attack you in waves. Now, it's not like... In the Warriors of Roshi series, when you have, you know, troops, but you have waves. That is, in a good thing itself, because basically you can rack up kills really, really fast. I've done this a couple of times. It is a beautiful thing seeing a lot of fallen enemies at at your feet, and they fade away going back to the hell from which they came. That sort of thing. I mean, I have to say, the good part lies in how it how it handles. You're not gonna see any you're not gonna see anything bad about it. It's just a, it's just the hitbox is the only issue I feel is the only issue compared to everything else. Everything else is good. It's just that set difficulty that kinda kind of irks me. I like to set my difficulty. I like to, you know, switch it from... I like to check out the difficulty by my own self. Like, usually, like in a Dynasty Warriors game or a Samurai Warriors game, if it's fair to the player, then it's, then it's worth playing. Otherwise, if it's not, then, you know, why do that? So, you know, like I said, it should have, like, a, a switch to set the difficulty 
from normal, which is the default, to rather hard or easy. You know, that's all I have to say. Story-wise, I have never seen that many big boobs like 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 I've seen so far in all, in all the times I've been playing video games. I mean, the characters, that's, that's where. All I'd say is, hey, boobs aside, <laughs> I like it. I really do like it. It plays on the one thing I really do love in books, namely medieval. I like the medieval genre. It feels so Lord of the Rings to me, so therefore it's like, eesh, good. It, 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 it got me at that part. So 99 Nights 1, or N3 1, is worth trying out for yourself if you are a fan of what I like to call 1 versus 1000. Yeah. These, these kind of games, I could say, is in, in its own genre, the 1 versus 1000. So, N3-1, standard, average, run-of-mill, one versus one thousand thing against all odds, I should say. It's your against all odds type of game. So rather, I got this for four dollars, four dollars from GameStop, and it's worth getting if you run across it. So by all means, if you have a 360, or I think it might be on PS3, try it for yourself. You may like it, you may not like it, but like I said. This is out of personal opinion. This is not. This is out of personal opinion and like ability for me. But really, try this out for yourself. Now the next game is the sequel, which is done by Kinemi. And I have to say, the sequel is whew, damn. The sequel blew me away. Couldn't stop. I couldn't put it down. I swear, I couldn't put this game down even if I wanted to. I mean, this... N3-2, my God, N3-2. N3-2 just blew my mind because it still plays on the medieval genre, and I do love medieval genre. Even if it goes... Even if it's dark age, I'm a sucker for that because, hey, I'm an author. I work under those kind of conditions, like it has to be a dark age or something like that. One hero, whether whether he's neutral good or lawful good or chaotic good, takes on the very evil for a fallen country. Hey, I like that. But you're not going to get anything bad from me. What I really do like about this game is, once again, the playability. Oh, and plus... The fact that you can customize your characters. You only have five characters to work with. Each of them, of course, having their own moveset. And, um, you first start with Galen here, who's, who's basically, you know, against all odds. And, um, what I had to say about that is, Chira is awesome. But the one thing I really do like is that it has its own feel. It's not like its predecessor. It's it's something much better. And I feel that, you know, against, against all odds, those kind of games, you need something to say, okay, the story is going to continue. At this rate, I like it. I'm, I'm liking where this series is going. I want to see a, I want to see a part three very badly. And I'd like to continue this. I mean, it plays something like a... How should I say this? It plays like Castlevania. Except that you're whipping ass with a guy pulling two swords and a boss fight. Oh my god, the boss fights are crazy. The last boss fight I dealt with had... I don't know. I, I can't describe it. It's something out of a hentai. I, I'll just say it like that. It just don't have tentacles. It just it it just looked like something out of anti. But aside from that, 
I, I'm just I'm just not gonna say. It's it's kind of like this. It it feels like it's Castlevania. If turned, I I shouldn't say turned. It feels like Castlevania is converted to the side of the Warrior series. Think on that for a moment. That means it feels like um what does it feel like? It feels like this game. That's what it feels like. It feels like Fist of North Star. That's what it reminds me of. It feel it feels like Fist of North Star. And that's the beautiful thing about it. But the but the only difference is against all odds you have a badass guy with two swords in his hand, along with four other playable characters you can go with. So, it is crazy good. And plus, it plays like a Warriors game, so you can never actually say it's a bad game in itself. Um, the only... Uh, there, there's the small badness of it, and that is just platform jumping. Gonna have a bit of platform jumping to deal with, and because it is long, you will easily get lost. That's the only thing I just don't like about that. I don't like certain games in which the map is it, the map is there, but your icon is small. It's small to where you can't hardly ever see it, so you have to use. The zoom in just to see where the hell you are, but I like to I like to see where I'm going even if it's on the mini map scale, in which it's like this. I want to actually see myself as like a big blue dot or you know a big green arrow or something like that. But the your indicator is just about this small and it's in a different color. That's the only thing I really don't like. Otherwise, this game. This game I also ordered. It only cost me about fifteen dollars. So basically, if you want to do that, you know that's twenty bucks all together. If you want to order these two games, you can. Or if you can actually find it in GameStop or any or any game store of your choice, you can do that. Now again, I'm not sure if it's on PS3, but you can check for you PS3 users. I'm not leaving nobody out. But for you PS3 users and um, likely Xbox 360 users, I highly recommend this game because it is badass. It really just says it all. You know, it screams badass. One character which unlocks the rest. Just like the first game. One character unlocks the rest. So the more you progress, the more characters you can unlock, but, you know, since it's smaller, well, you know, it's only been, it's going to be like a few, kind of, you know, a, just a few, not, not, not too much. But really, in three, I have to say, it is worth sharing, and I, and I highly recommend you try in three for yourself, that's, 99 nights, so if you don't know what N3 is, now you know what N3 is. So with that, folks, my final, my final score, if I had to give it, if I had to give it a score, I'd give it, N3 1, i give that one a 6 out of 10. I mean, it's playable. The hitbox, I can... I have a thing with, but, you know... Not for everyone else, but, you know... Just that little thing about, you know... The feel, the feel... And I forgot the camera. The camera angle is... The camera angle will mess you up. So, yeah, I would give it a 6 out of 10. In 3-2, I would give it an 8. It has a Castlevania feel to it, but, uh, you know, aside from that, it's lengthy. If you like lengthy games, then good luck trying to tame that beast because, man, they will jack you up.
the bosses will indeed jack you up if you don't know what to do. Or if you're not leveled high enough. But really, level your weapons. Trust me. You'll be glad you did. Anyway, this is the Tenkaichi of Gaming. And I just gave you my honest opinion on N3. I hope you have enjoyed, and I will see you the very next time that I see you. Until, until then, take care, and Tenkai Muso.